Welcome. This is the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. It's May 25th, 2022. Let's get the attendee list here correct. Thanks for joining. Topics I had on the agenda for today include, oh good, Jan's here, excellent. So I had preparing for June LTS as one topic to see if there were additional changes we need to discuss here that should be backported. Uh, UI improvements, Jan and Tim wanted to add, add, allow time here, particularly Tim, if you wanted to highlight the new login screen or any other topics. And I had included a topic for localization and crowd in enterprise if we've got time. Any other topics that need to be added to the agenda? Okay, great. So then, then for me, the first topic was prepping for the June LTS. There are some, some things that were mentioned or are open as pull requests to Jenkins Core that Tim, I wanted to use as a chance to check with you and with Jan to see if there are things where you say, hey, this should be backported or that should be. Uh, for example, there was this Java 17, there were a couple of Java 17 related things. Is it okay if those wait till dot two or dot three? They're not really UI related. So I guess maybe I'm out of out of order asking here, but. Um, so the Java 17, yeah, I don't think the Java 17 one needs backporting. Okay, good. I mean, right. we can backport it in dot two, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't rush to backport them. Right. Give it a few weeks to bake in in weekly. Good. Okay. Now there was this one on the inbound cookie key for for a uh, a specific one for remoting. Yeah, it seems like Vincent is trying to get that geared up. I think he can request it if he wants it Great. to be in dot one. Otherwise, it'll go into dot two, I assume. Okay, all right. And then on the closed list, this open search to use the newer Jenkins logo actually seemed safe to me, but I wasn't sure if it's important enough to consider a backboard. No one's noticed it in 10 years. Ah, good, okay. Other, so, other, than, other than Jan. Got it, okay, all right. So, so and... This one, I think the new layout for remote class loader stats was already backported, if I remember right. No, maybe not. This one that was not, sense. but it's, and again, it's, it could wait till dot two. Well, it's a feature sort of one. We wouldn't normally backport it. We might bring it into a dot one, um, but we probably wouldn't. I, I guess it's kind of a out of sync with the rest of the UI, but. Yeah, yeah, but quite relatively harmless, right? Yes, it's out yeah. of sync, but it's it's certainly not a functional functional damage thing. Okay, yeah. I mean, you, you could probably class it as a bug by not matching the rest of the UI. Right. So if you want to backport it, I would change it to be a bug. <laughs> Otherwise, it won't show up in any filters. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. So we'll just follow the following the usual process for backports to propose backwards and make them happen. Great. All right, any other guidance you wanna give there, Tim, on prepping for the June LTS? No, I think we're good. Good, all right, and my, my interactive testing with the release candidate has been really positive. Next topic then, UI improvements. Jan or Tim, are there any topics you would like to bring here there for discussion? I've, uh, I've got the one, um, it's all about keyboard shortcuts on Jenkins. That would be cool. Um, are you okay sharing, sharing your screen or is there something you'd like to show for discussion? Yeah, uh, I can share my screen if that's all right. Um, All right, so let me stop. Sweet. All right. Um, it's just a small thing that I've been toying with. Um, all right. So can you guys see my screen? Yep. 
Awesome. Okay. Um, so the whole idea is just to kind of improve navigation around Jenkins um, with the use of keyboard shortcuts. Um, say if we go to open up a project, you'll now see that certain actions have little keys assigned to them. And so you can press these keys on the keyboard to actually activate those. So if we press W, go to your workspace, press B to build a job, and you can press S to go to the configure screen. So it just works like that. Um, if we open up an actual build, uh, you can press C to quickly go to your console, or you can press J or K to flick between different builds. So if we hit J, go to the previous build, hit K, goes to the goes to the next. Um, if you press Command K, um, it'll focus the search bar, so you can instantly start typing. Like, Hello world! That instantly start doing that, so you don't have to move your cursor. And there's also a handy little dialog you can open uh, to see the available keyboard shortcuts for a page. So if you hit the keyboard shortcuts in the footer, you'll get this small little model. We'll just explain the different keyboard shortcuts um, that are available to you. And you can kind of interact with them whilst this dialogue is open without actually interfering with the page. So you can try them out uh, without doing any damage. So if I press Command K, you'll notice the search kind of option highlights. Press C, console does it, and then J or question mark to show the keyboard shortcut dialog. Um, that's that's just a really simple look at it, really. Um, there's not a whole lot to it right now. Um, just more of an exploration into how keyboard shortcuts could work on Jenkins and if there's actually any benefit. Do I have any questions or anything? So how do how do we how do we referee or control who adds which shortcut? So B feels like a great shortcut for build now, but I happen mm -hmm. to be named Bob and I think Bob should be the preferred shortcut. And I'm gonna create a plugin that makes Bob, <laughs> no, sorry, bad example, but you'd probably get my idea. Yeah, um, there's nothing right now in the kind of prototype to stop that, um, but ideally would have some sort of exception thrown if you try to kind of override a core Jenkins keyboard shortcut. Um, all the way they're implemented right now is they're just um, data attributes. So hopefully you can see that. Um, but for the build now option, it just has a data keyboard shortcut B. Um, and it also has a shortcut title as well, which displays on the dialogue that opens. Um, so it's really easy to actually implement in a plugin or anything, um, but nothing to actually stop overriding anything just yet. Um, but if you want to go through with this, then that would be pretty quite straightforward to add. Um, definitely a good addition. So, so this feels like you're making it much easier for me now to, to interact with single key, key actions, somewhat similar to how I use a slash to search GitHub. That's, that's sort mm -hmm. of the idea, right? It's, it yeah. gives me... That looks great. Any any problems you've encountered or things where you saw, oh, hey, this is a risk for this area or that area. Okay, the search dialogue, for instance, is is far from far from the capabilities I would dream we had there. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's not quite doing all the things we'd want. But are there other things that you've seen? Oh, here are potential struggles or challenges with it. Um, nothing too crazy. Um, say for example, where there's shared components, if you add a keyboard shortcut to a shared component, that keyboard shortcut applies to everywhere that component's used. So that can kind of cause issues if you're not careful um, with how you're applying it. Um, for example, I wanted a shortcut that would take you to the most recent build of a project. Um, so I applied it to this little button here, thinking that'd be a straightforward place to add it. Um, but on the home page, that component's reused. So that kind of interfered with the home page then. Um, so uh, care does need to be taken to make sure that we're not kind of making kind of too many shortcuts, for example. But 
nothing nothing too crazy really so the so the 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 component reuse point that you made then is that if if i define a keyboard shortcut it's available anywhere that component is used that defines the shortcut and in this case top level page would have would have could have potentially many many entries many rows each one that has the same exact shortcut defined taking me to the console of that thing and that that would i assume give unexpected results yeah yeah spot on really so just the four points i have concerning that approach so first one Thank you for the proposal. In terms of accessibility, user experience for power users, it seems to be a very nice approach. I will say the drawback is that we will have to increase the performance of Jenkins to suit this kind of feature we are proposing to the user, but that's the more interesting aspect. Um, I have three questions concerning this feature. Could you just open one page with the, the shortcut being visible with the, the keystrokes? Uh, yeah, if you move the cursor on top of the W, for example, are you seeing a title? Okay, so my first guess there is that we are getting a lot of question. What are these kind of icon? For people mm -hmm. that are not used to have such keyboard being displayed directly, it could be interesting to have a title to say, hey, it's a shortcut to do this kind of thing, uh, see the doc or anything that is just useful for the, the final user. Uh, second point, is it possible in the moment, or do you plan to do it, to disable completely the feature? My gut feeling with what I have seen in the past is that this kind of feature is very good most of the time, except for some pages where the JavaScript is perhaps a bit not really good practice, following good practices and interacting with expected feature. For example, if you're starting to write something in the search bar and the JavaScript is perhaps not written correctly, your keystroke inside the search bar could trigger some shortcut. That happened to me in a lot of applications, and that was a bit painful. So is there a possibility to disable that behavior completely? And I will say as a last question, uh, due to the question from Mark in terms of extensibility there, what do you plan to do if two plugins are proposing the same shortcut? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so that first one was really good about the kind of tool tip or title um, showing. Um, it, could, it could totally be confusing if you're not sure what these little keys mean. Um, so that's, that's really awesome. So I can definitely add like a tool tip or something more. Um, I'm not sure, maybe if we just even removed them and relied on the, the modal um, could be an option. I'm not too sure what the best kind of approach is right now, but it's definitely worth exploring. Um, as for, say you're typing in the search bar and you press one of the keys that are kind of assigned to a, say, sidebar item, for example, um, the library we're using for this disables the keyboard shortcuts if you're entering into an input. Um, so that's not an issue, thankfully. Um, I will say if, when you know what you are doing and there is a lot of plugin where the people does not really know what they were doing. I'm just afraid of this kind of possibilities mm -hmm. in terms of regression. Um, and then for the last point, yeah, I think we're going to need some sort of maybe a alert system in the, in the console, for example, to kind of flag if a, a shortcut's been kind of overwritten or if it's being used twice. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to press a button and have two different things happen. <laughs> That'd be pretty horrific. Um, so something that could flag, say, a plugin developer before they try to release it would be really, really helpful. Yep. And well, perhaps as a first iteration, do not even try to put such shortcut for the dangerous action. For example, the mm -hmm. delete project, this kind of thing. Uh, I will say it's already too easy for people to click on this kind of thing without desiring to click there. So uh, just a good feeling. Now, now to, to sort of as a counter though, to Vadik, your point, we already have symbol annotations that have the risk that users can, or that a plugin maintainer can, just like Mark Waite made the mistake of doing, can define a symbol git 
that in fact overrides a, a pipeline step get and is not a good thing. So, so, so this collision thing we've already got, but I think it's, it's worth if there are ways to avoid hitting the collisions or warn people about a collision, that's, that's certainly healthy. Yeah, especially because there are not a lot of letters or keyboard that you can use compared to full symbols. And also in Jenkins, we have something that is a bit particular. Some action could be displayed depending on some condition, depending on some context. So it's even more difficult for some plugin maintainer to know if they are creating something in conflict or not. So, yeah. Thank you, Jan. Thanks very much. Boris, I'll stop sharing if that's all right. Okay. Anything else that you wanted to share on that topic, Jan? Um, nothing on that topic. You did mention kind of updating the search feature, and I gave a demo on that kind of a few months ago now, um, back on one of the way back in the day meetings. Um, I've kind of picked that up again. Um, I'm in the process of kind of reworking it, making it a bit kind of easy to maintain. Um, Which feature oh, was that? Sorry, you know the kind of search modal. Um, oh yeah, yeah, search. Instead yeah. of the the input would have a kind of modal or pop up, you could kind of search on the screen. Um, I was basically extending that to be more like a command palette that you'd find in kind of Visual Studio Code or something like that um, to make it easy to find different actions on Jenkins. Um, but I'll hopefully have something to demo on that maybe next time um, if I can get it a bit more fleshed out. That's everything. Cheers. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks very, very much. So on that theme, if if everybody be, if others would be okay with it, I wanted to bring a specific topic up that sort of I think relates to what Jan was just saying. It's this German language edition of an accessibility assessment. Uh, would you be okay if I bring that to the to the group now, out of sort of out of order? Okay, no objections. Good. So I was contacted by a person from I believe Czech, the Czech Republic. Uh, or from Croatia, I, I forget exactly where, but what they were suggesting was, hey, they did this 60 page assessment of Jenkins accessibility as part of a company requested company purchase thing from some someone. And they, they, they asked us, hey, are you interested in this report? And how is the best way to bring this report to the Jenkins project if you are interested? Uh, it's right now German language. It's right now private to them, so it's it's not a public document yet. But they've offered to translate it to English, and to be available. Now, my question to to the UX SIG was, is that of interest? And how would what would be the most approachable way, if it is of interest, to bring that report for for discussion and consideration? Jan, how have you handled those kinds of things before? Tim, likewise, and Basel. I think you're the three most experienced in these sort of spaces. I'd be interested. What what would work well or poorly for you? Probably just an issue, like an issue on issues touching us to IO with it attached would be the start, and then someone to review it and create issues in an epic out of it. Um, if there's anything that looks like it's worth doing. So, so if we started with attach the, the, the master PDF file to an Epic in Jira and then create sub items as we, as we need to, as we feel to based on those, because none of these things are a commitment in any way. They're all, Hey, what can we do? What's of interest, et cetera. But you would be okay if we, put an archive or a copy of that PDF on that top level Epic and then used issues in Jira to report, record things. Or if someone said, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to try to improve this. They create an issue based on that report and record it there. That would be okay. Yeah. I think that's a good place to start. And there's probably a lot of low hanging fruit that we could find in that report. I imagine some things will be easy to fix and others might be bigger projects. But if there's things that are easy, then it would be good to make you know bite-sized tasks in Jira, and we could even advertise those as part of you know future 
hackathons or contribute thons, um, if there are simple things that could be fixed in a short amount of time and would provide some accessibility value, then that could be a good opportunity to, to advertise those in a broader audience. And I'd, I'd be happy to work on, I'd be happy to try to work on splitting some of those issues up into JIRA projects. Great. All right. Thank you. Okay. So I'll, I'll talk with them, talk with them, see if I can persuade them. I think they've actually shared the German language document with me and have, have stated that they're willing for it to be made public, but let me double check with them. And if so, then I'll likely upload the German language document and, and see if they're willing to translate. If they're not willing to translate, we still have the option of using the German language document as, as it exists. Great, thank you. All right, so that, that covered that topic. Tim, did you want to do anything additional? You wanna highlight the new login screen or anything like that? Are there any other things on UI that you wanted to talk to? Uh, it might be worth doing a quick review of the open pull request, but you could just you could just quickly share your screen on weekly.ci.jigans.io. Okay, let me do that. you want to share the login screen. You bet, here we go. So sharing my screen. And you should now see the meeting notes. And if I just go to weekly and click log in. Yep. So you'll so see that the, the inputs are consistent with the rest of um, Jenkins now. Um, checkboxes actually have a focus state. Previously, they didn't have a focus state, but it wasn't really noticed because you had to tab off past the sign in button. Um, and there's no sign up enabled on this instance, but similar sort of things applied to the sign up page. Um, and I think the main reason of doing this was there was a pull request open a year or two back, which wanted to move the keep me signed in box uh, to after the password input. Um, but it was quite misaligned. It was kind of not even, it was kind of indented a whole bunch randomly. Um, so that was the reason to do that. But then I found that the focus state didn't work and I think it was another issue. Um, so yeah, it should just be a lot more consistent with the rest of Jenkins. I okay, also pull, I think that um, code now was, was completely isolated before, but it's now pulling in the uh, list files for the components, all the components that we're using are imported in those files rather than copy pasting of CSS and using different CSS. Um, so it should be a lot easier to manage these pages going forward. Okay, so this is much less of a one-off as a page than it was before, and it looks the same as, as other fields that are in Jenkins now for this upcoming LTS. Great, for yeah. an, already might, in weekly. There might still be a little bit of CSS, but I deleted a lot of CSS and, and imported the existing components. Excellent, thank you. And to remind others, weekly.jenkins.ci.jenkins.io continues to be updated. Yes, it's now running 2.349. It was released on Tuesday. And the design library is here and gives you a great chance to look at and see how, how, how you can do implementations of UI components in modernizing. So thanks very much, Tim. Thanks, Jan. Thank you. Thank you. I'm working on a extension point in the theme manager at the moment to um, allow other plugins to contribute theming configuration to one area. So you don't have to have each plugin having its own theming section. Um, and then adding, looking at adding a, a properties map to that where um, each theme can set the recommended theme um, for that plugin, which is going to be for the uh, Prism, API, Prism API plugin, which is a source code highlighter um, JavaScript and CSS library. Uh, I've got a pull request on the design library plugin, which um, integrates with Prism API, but it's not the best user experience. The user has to go and manually set their th theme and their configuration, and like would never work on that weekly.ci.genus.io. Um, so I'm going to hopefully have theme should suggest the default theme and changes from default to theme matches matches theme or something um and um yeah 
and they probably split the Prism API plugin because uh, it, it's got dependencies on the Bootstrap plugin and the plugin util API and something else seems a bit heavy for what it is, even if they're kind of already installed everywhere. Um, but yeah. Um, because we also want to use this in the configurations code plugin, which is very dependency light. And even if those dependencies are kind of fine, it'd be nice not to include them. Um, but yeah, so that should be coming. And so people using their Dart theme will no longer be blinded um, with the code um, blocks. I know Jan tried to hack that into the plugin as well, um, just with some CSS overrides, but hopefully we won't need those. Excellent. Well, and, and now theme ability, the, the symbols that we're using now in the UI, so they they have the benefit that they are themable. So they they when I switch to dark theme, they don't become invisible, right? They they really are usable and still ready to go. Excellent. Yeah, I think we've just got I don't the dark dark theme doesn't seem to be set on that weekly, but we can probably hold off setting it until code blocks react properly. All right. Anything else you wanted to highlight there? Uh, I think just, just check how we are on the pull requests. Uh, oh, oh, right. You had suggested that just a minute. Let me get, let's open up this. The So this is Jenkins core pull requests, right? Yeah. So we've got six open at the moment. Uh, and so you were looking at web UI? Yeah. Okay. Here, let's make it so I can read it with my bad eyes. Great. So we're kind of stuck on the um, tippy one until matrix auth. Um, actually, is Adrian here? Adrian, you're here. Did you see uh, so on the tippy one? If you go down to the bottom, Mark, um, you were having an issue when you tested it. Do you know if you tested it with the pull request that adapts that makes it compatible? Uh, no, I I tried on the other on uh, installing the plugin. I need to yeah. I, I will I will check that. Sorry, I didn't see your message before this meeting. I'll yeah. I made sure to test with the appropriate build of. Of the metric of, uh, yeah, that should just fix it. I've I've applied the same fix onto um, the zero AD plugin as well, and that's released already. Um, but I've been having trouble getting hold of Daniel, pinging for the last few weeks. If anyone wants to pass along the message, yeah, sure. So, so what what's needed here is that one needs to be needs to be merged and released. Yeah. And one of the problem we have is that there's no easy way to override plugins and acceptance test harness. It doesn't increment, it doesn't integrate with incrementals at all. Um, I think we could add some hacky code with the current setup. We could add some hacky code to the Jenkins file to download the plugins and put them in a specific directory, um, but it's not very nice. Um, so we'd either need to come up with a more generic handling of it um, well, currently we've kind of just been waiting for that to be released. Um, but it's kind of annoying is we don't really have a way of testing the impact of a plugin change in the um, acceptance test harness. Um, we can handle core changes very easily, but we can't really handle plugin changes. Um, at least by like running the whole suite, someone can locally run it and do what they need to. But, um, and so that's a problem at the moment because, um, a lot of plugins depend on matrix auth and because the matrix and the matrix auth part of ATH is failing and that caused a lot of tests to fail. So we don't know if those tests are impacted until this is released. Ah, uh, okay. And now this this change, I assume it's it's still compatible with the pre-tippy world? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's com okay. completely compatible. It's got, it's got multiple okay. levels of compatibility because it changed in like 2.235, 2.335 and pre, so yeah, it's all, it's all I think when checkboxes changed and, all these levels of compatibility okay and um, but yeah so that's what's holding that one up but yeah that so that's one's quite a good one um because i think it should fix um cross-site scripting issues um like generically 
um, ac across tooltips anyway. Um, so it re removes the problem by not executing HTML in um, the default attribute. You have to supply your own attribute. You have to explicitly opt into it. Um, so rather than the default, it's an opt-in behavior to be able to supply HTML. And now will that that change alter things like um, the Markdown plugin that I use, for instance, I assume it won't. Uh, it'll be only in tooltips. So oh, 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 right. Sorry, I'm. I, I should learn to read. Yeah, tooltip yeah, so specific, we, and so the we, thing I'm doing does is not tooltips. Maybe the badge yeah. plugin might be touched then, because I think it does to tooltips. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So the the, the only there's very very little places use HTML in it. Um, we've we've allowed listed some very common ones, which are BR basically. So quite a few places use BR to create a new line. So we've allowed we've allowed that sort of. Um, apart from that, the only other place I found so far is in Matrix Auth that uses a strong tag tag um, to make some text bold, um, and that's pretty much about it. I think I'm not sure. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Anything you want to review on other uh, other of these web UI pull requests that are pending? Mm -hmm. Just going through them, um, I just I can just give a quick update. Um, so the Tango one, um, Alex, well, Alex or anyone, um, there's some unit tests failing with it. it just needs um, someone to look at the unit tests. Um, these ones are very vulnerable because they generally rely on some sort of image, and the, the image gets removed or changed or gets swapped to be an SVG from an image and these tests, these sort of tests fail all the time. Okay. Really annoying. Thanks. Uh, the next one's configure project. I think there. Can't remember what's wrong with that. It should be a comment on it though. PCT. Uh, yeah. So, so bomb tests are failing. Um, and a few plugins, not very many, um, with some weird undefined error when it's trying to add the event selector. But I, I, it's hard to tell because I think it only gives the line number of one, but it looks like it's saying basically window is undefined because it's literally accessing window as far as I know. Um, I tried running the plugin tests locally with, without PCT and it seemed fine. Um, I created a mega war and then I ran out of time um, to try and reproduce it actually in PCT and try and debug it interactively. But um, it's from looking at it so far, it, it just seems really weird and it's maybe HTML unit being stupid, I don't know. Okay, so, so and now this workflow job plugin that needs a release, has that actually been released then, the, the checkbox? I don't know it might have been merged yesterday so possibly now i think may... it was released yesterday okay yeah. yeah because i believe this plugin is doing continuous delivery right yeah so it's probably del delivered okay great cool i'll update that yeah so it's just the pct were there uh, were there any more action items for the um the changes to adapt uh, the folders plugin and work and the workflow job plugin to display the new UI features because we had some pull requests for those that are not this, they're not blocking this change but they're related to it and that they would they would allow other plugins to use this new feature. So the forward compatibility is fixed and for folders that I think the PR has been reviewed and tested and it's ready for when the core is released it's not very easy to make it forward compatible there'll be a lot there's a lot of changes in the markup um right so, so okay great so that that's really all i was asking was what, whether yeah. uh, there's any any additional action items for those and it sounds like it's it's not like we just need to wait for core to be released and for the plugin maintainer to be willing to adjust the baseline and then those other two can be released which sounds great yeah yeah, and yeah, once that one's in, I want to change the configure cloud pages to use the same design 
because I hate that page. It's so hard to find stuff. It gets so big. And I've wanted a, something like this for a long time. <laughs> Great. Uh, so anything that you want to review on other topics here, Tim? I think we, I think, so the next one, ATH tests are failing. So I think, I think some ATH tests have started failing. So we need to check, we need to fix them and get them passing again. And it kind of comes back to Basil's, some of the ATH stuff um, from the mailing list. Um, but yeah, I, it would be good to have a way that it doesn't randomly break. Right. Yeah. So this is, so you're saying this is the one you're describing, right? Where? No, it's the, um, no. the one I was talking oh. about with fixed spacing and job config page. So PR ah. looks good and straightforward. There is something like 12 tests failing. And so I need to check if they're legitimate failures and if they're, and well, either way they need fixing. We don't really want to be making judgment calls because as has happened previously, they're just shadowing. So when those tests were fixed, they actually failed later on. So I don't really want to be accepting things with the test failing that affect it. Right, right. Okay, so this is the one where the before has this gap here between GitHub project and pipeline speed durability and the after gets rid of that, that gap so that it lo looks consistent. Yeah. Got it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And the form validation one has got changes a function or removes a function or something, which a few plugins were relying on. Mm, okay. Get parameter plugin. We had similar pro we had similar problems. We had problems with that during tables to div as well. It's doing some weird stuff for form validation, I think. And, and yeah, get parameter plugin is also bundling an, an outdated jQuery that we would love to get rid of. So there, the Git parameter plugin has a number of, of challenges. Did you get a chance to look at that, Jan? I've, I've not had a proper look yet. Um, I didn't run it, but I couldn't get the exception um, to occur. Uh, that was, was on this post, um, but it is definitely using some custom kind of validation logic. So it'd be good to kind of remove if possible, but I'm not really sure what it's doing at the moment. Okay, so that what you're ref referring to, Jan, is described here in in the comments. Yeah. yeah. Ah, great. All right, thank you. Okay. Excellent. Anything else on on the open pull request for Web UI? No, I think that's it. Okay. All right. So. So other one question for you, Jan, I guess, is how how do you get on with the um like weather replacement icons? Be quite good to get those in at some point. Mm -hmm. Um they're still still in a branch. Um the way I went about it was a bit of a kind of refactor of how the, the ball kind of component worked. Um so after the kind of symbol PR went in that kind of broke a few areas, I was a bit kind of hesitant to kind of open it, um, but I can definitely kind of bring it up to date with master and see what it's like now. Um, or we could alternatively just do about the refactor and just replace the symbols um, in the SVG, if that makes sense, directly. Um, yeah, whatever makes sense, I guess. But it would be nice to have the kind of weather icons accessible as Jenkins symbols. Yeah, future yeah, stuff. Well, um, yeah, that would be good. So, so to be sure I understand, that's let's go back to weekly. So, the weather icons. Oh, they're probably oh, there is a job here. Okay, so this is a weather icon, right? And that yeah. is not currently done as a symbol. No, that's it's a weird kind of. It used to be like a ball back in the day, and there was a whole component based around it, and this whole kind of hierarchy. Um, it's all a bit weird um so i looked at replacing that to make it a bit simpler and also integrated with the new symbols that we've got um but just a bit hesitant if any plugins use it and, and whatnot i don't want to break anything touch wood 
All right. Okay, any other topics there? Okay, next topic I had was localization in crowd and enterprise. Uh, just to, to give thanks to Alex Brandes, who's been doing wonderful things with crowdin.jenkins.io. Thanks to Crowd in Enterprise for donating the license. And thanks to translators like Bruno and Alex and uh, Chris Stern. We've got translations. So right now we've got, uh, is it seven or eight different plugins that are working through here? And we hope soon to do uh, some highlights on how you internationalize Jenkins plugins to encourage more of this sort of work. Yeah, it's really, hopefully, hopefully it becomes really useful. But yeah, I think as Basil mentioned on the mailing list too, it'd be really good to revive one of those translation assistance plugins and, or localization plugin and kind of link into here maybe. Right, yeah, so if, if we could find a way to, to, well, so for instance, to jump into something that shows the string native language from inside the Jenkins UI and encourages people, hey, contribute a translation here. Yeah, I think that, that, that feels like a really, a really a great idea. Yeah, I think that existing plugin has 25,000 installations or something around that order. So, you know, updating it and releasing a new version would essentially expose tens of thousands of people to this new Crowdin uh, website, which is a lot more people than you could expose than just by advertising on a few mailing lists. Right. So I, think, I think that could be a powerful way of, of funneling contributions in. Yeah. And if we want even more than that, we could even install it by default in the suggested plugins list. I wouldn't be opposed to that either. And then that would, that would escalate the funnel to maybe 200,000 instead of 25,000. Good insight, thank you. Any other items on localization and crowd in? Then I've got one more item that I wanted to add to the agenda just to ask for advice. And, and I, I, this is piracy of the agenda but I wanted to ask about a UI thing that I'm considering doing to one of my plugins, but I wanted Jan and Tim while you're here to guide me on this. So I've got a plugin that I maintain called Job Priorities. It puts itself over here on the left-hand side in the sidebar. I don't think it helps users being there. Are there reasons why I should not move that into Manage Jenkins so that it's somehow where in here? Are there, is there damage that I do if I attempt that kind of a move? Just like I don't find lockable resources particularly useful here. Is there so a are, reason yeah. we should not move those into Manage Jenkins or someplace else? That's a couple of points. One, avoid sidebar links if you can. They just take up space. They make you scroll down and, and then a lot of them aren't used very much. Two, um, sometimes they're there if, non-privileged users um, need to need to use them. Um, but you can also change that so that privileged users see it on the managed Jenkins page and non-privileged users there. Another thing is I tried to um, expose the managed Jenkins page to more users, but kind of got blocked by Daniel um, thinking that existing administrators would get very scared of other people started seeing that. But I was kind of trying to make it so that people would see credentials there and see and CLI and sort of thing. Um, so the smaller tasks that less privileged users, they just expose that page up a bit more. Um, but yeah, especially if I don't know who, who can change job priorities at the moment. Me. No, I'm I mean a like as a as a oh, user oh. of like on a, as a user of Jenkins, who can who has permission to manage job priorities? There's a facility that allows non-admin users to modify it, but I like your idea that I could hide it on the admin page for admin users and only put it on the sidebar for, for non-admin users. That, yeah, that already so the, gives me hope. So the credentials plugin is an example of that. So it does that. 
oh, good. So I can look at somebody else's code. Good. All right. Thank you. So, so for me, similarly, lockable resources. Now, I don't. I'm not a maintainer of lockable resources, but lockable resources has has this this same kind of. It's right there, and I never use it. I don't know other people who use this this sidebar link. It could conceivably move to manage Jenkins. And and then for non-admin users, if it's needed, be placed here as well. Great. Okay. Thanks for the guidance. I see, I see a maintainer on the call here. Oh, you do. Oh, very nice. I'm I'm, an, I'm the interim. I call myself interim maintainer because I adopted it to release a Guava fix, and no one else has uh, stepped up since then. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, an and awful, an awful table and an awful icon. <laughs> Right. Okay. Any other topics for today? Yeah, the, the icon is jarring because it's it's the only I think it's the only icon on the left hand side that is an old style icon in the default installation. In the I mean in the default list of suggested plugins. I think the support yeah. and support and blue ocean are also um, old style, as we can see in this um, view, but I don't think that they're in the def I don't think they're in the suggested plugins list, if I remember yeah. correctly. But the lot the lot yeah. of resources is. Well, on my instance, that's up to date um, that we use in production. Those are the those are the three ones that look very out of place. Cool. All right. Any other topics for today? Okay. Then thanks everybody. I will. Stop the share, stop the recording.